Jesus. This is one of the villages that we desire to build to construct a borehole but it's kind of expensive it takes ten thousand dollars to construct one borehole that is minus surveying and and everything like transportation and all the things but only construction of the borehole takes ten thousand but if you put on the like, surveying and transportation and everything it can cost you like maybe thirteen thousand that is thirteen thousand dollars and but the people on the field they really really need this borehole because this water is really dirty the cows feed on it as well the people use this and they use this for drinking for cooking for washing for showering or bathing everything and as well to feed their cattle so you can imagine how sick it is and the people who have this or these villages they see we are blessed because we have this because some have to walk maybe 10 miles to come and feed on this to come and get water from this water pond so we really need to do something to change this life so that we can have a borehole so that people can mm -hmm. I sent to Jonathan and mm -hmm. Jonathan constructed this borehole oh, really? yeah for this village so now people are using pure clean water oh that's good it's really a great meal yeah yeah by this water. Hey, this, yeah. this well preached the gospel. Okay. It does, and you see the patriarchs, exactly. all the patriarchs exactly. digging wells, mm -hmm. which were a blessing to people exactly. a thousand years later. Yeah. yeah. That's, you know, that's a gift that keeps giving. You know, I, I always thank God for this opportunity to reach out to the villages. Mm. My desire is. I always want to see someone like you go to, to any unknown area, mm -hmm. the one you see in the middle of nowhere, mm -hmm. and then years down the road, you say, let me settle in the middle of nowhere. And sometime down the road, they, it's no longer called the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. You say, oh, you're going to the other such and such a spot. Mm -hmm because you devoted yourself to go to this middle of nowhere mm -hmm. and this is exactly my desire mm -hmm. to go to these unreached areas wow. and i preach the gospel and some time down the road they say oh no we want to thank god for them. whoever came and then they did this water well no matter how bad the circumstances of someone's birth, no matter how evil the acts that may have led up to the conception of a child, when God permitted me or you to be conceived in the womb of our mother, I tell you, it was not by accident. It was not by accident. God has a purpose for you. And behind them are spiritual powers, satanic powers, Satan and his angels, which influence the people, the people in power who do not acknowledge the Lord God. Almighty. The people like that old man at the United Nations. <laughs> who said Jesus Christ is not welcome here. These are the people being influenced by devils. <laughs> Thank 
Ciri. Ne va dire que je vais me faire He needs us to stand with him. He needs us to stand with him. He needs us to Someone has just uh, they brought a baby a week old and taking the babies home after three years that person that baby qualified to go to another another children's home which is just near near where the baby's home has been uh, one thing i wanted really to bring out just imagine uh, someone from one year old uh, from one week joining the orphanage home then going to the same school uh, studying up to the college level let me say up to the college level he's really uh, in the environment of all the children are often you get my point all they they experience the same 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 life mm. experience the same problem mm. that kind of a character mm. and after short period for someone to come and say to tell that young child that young boy who has been in that kind of culture that you know what I have no food and I have no accommodation it's time for you to move away and face the world mm. I just want to imagine mm. just want you to imagine yes. how it looks like has never been in anywhere, has never seen other people interact with other people. It's really, it says, and it's like almost going back where you picked him. You get my point? Where you picked her. So it was really, really hard when they closed this uh, orphanage home. And how old were you? Uh, by the time they closed, I was most like, uh, I was almost coming to 18 years old. Right, so right on the verge of, of going to the to the field. Senior six. To, yeah. Actually, yeah. I was going to the university. University, yeah, by excuse the time me. They closed. Yeah. I couldn't go to the university because I didn't have money to pay for my tuition fee at the university. University, uh, every semester I can pay like 1,200 US dollar. But I just want you to imagine when someone has never been a part, has not been with a parent, has grown up in, with, with his fellow orphans, I just want to imagine where he's going to think to get money or to get a job to raise money for his university fee. Mm. It was really a very challenging moment, a very, very, very moment. I thought in my heart, where can I really begin? Where can I really take? But one thing I want to thank the Lord that all the years I've been in the orphanage home, uh, the Lord taught me to la taught me how to learn to pray. We serve a God who has delivered us from being slaves to the fear of death. I don't know if you can see these small scars on my arm. Um, I'm, I'm missing some little pieces of my flesh. I'm missing some skin. Some, some tendons. When I was 17 years old, I worked at a place where they kept dogs. And a, and a very big dog one day, when I was not looking, grabbed my arm. And I looked around, this dog had a hold of my arm, and there was no one to help me. I was all alone in a very small space. And for five minutes, brothers and sisters, this dog would not let go. 
as I was crying for help, he was tearing my arm, tearing my arm, and I thought, God help me. So when I didn't get Zakuo Kweya Mbanga Yen Numa Bulundi Nga Mamukama Nyamba. Is is this to be the end of my life at 17 years old? That this dog should should spill my blood on the ground and I should die at 17 years old from, from this stupid dog. And terror, terror took a hold of my soul. It was the fear of death, brothers and sisters. The fear of knowing there is no one to help me. I will die right here. And it meant nothing. That was what I thought. This means nothing. What a stupid way to die. So terror took a hold of my soul and fear. But at that moment I found myself crying out to the Lord God Almighty. I said, Dear Heavenly Father, as the dog was tearing my arm, Oh God the Son, Oh God the Holy Ghost, Deliver me! Brothers and sisters, the Our terror left me. I'm telling you, peace came over me. My situation had not changed. This damn dog still had my arm. He had not let go. And I was losing a lot of blood. But what had changed is the peace that passes understanding had fallen on me. The peace that tells us it's okay. If you die today, and your death is in the Lord Jesus Christ, it's going to be okay. <laughs> It's going to be okay. And, and at that moment, God gave me instructions. He gave me these instructions. He said, He said, Just lay down. Submit to the power of this dog. One moment before, I had been terrified to show this dog my neck or my belly. But God told me, just lay down. Just submit. So I laid down, I submitted, the dog let go, he walked away. He let go of my arm, he walked away, I grabbed my arm like this, praise God. <laughs> and I walked myself to a phone. What am I saying? We serve a God who no matter how terrible our situation, He's able to deliver us even from the clutches of death. The God who said to Lazarus, Arise! Come forth! You see, when we die, when we die, we go to the place where Jesus Christ has been. Glory to God and come back. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you for inviting me here tonight. Thank you for your sweet fellowship in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God bless you.